Deputy Speaker of this House. Last time I made my contribution, I congratulated the Speaker, but I had not congratulated you. I have no doubt in my mind that you lead this House and conduct the affairs of this House diligently and objectively. And I hope that the four members who are also going to constitute the Chairman's panel will get members with experience and ability to help you run the House. Having said that, Madam Speaker, allow me to make my contributions to the speech of the President. First, I want to state that this House has a collective responsibility to hover, oversight and hold the executive to account as a, a unit. But I'm also alive to the fact that this side of the House, the minority side, or the opposition that is used to be called, has an extra responsibility to even hold the executive to account much more. I am sure that we are not going to provide parochial opposition. We are going to provide an objective opposition. We will support government policies that are geared towards helping uh, better the lives of Kenyans and only oppose those policies which would uh, make us roll back on the gains that this country has made so far. So you, are, you expect a robust opposition from us, uh, an opposition that is informed with objectivity and helping the country to move forward. Madam Speaker, President Ruto is taking over a country that is so divided, a country that is divided right down in the middle, a country where 50% or near 50% voted for him, and another 50% or near 50% did not vote for him. This is a country that requires real symbol of national unity. I am happy that the president did indicate in his speech that he's going to run a united country, that service delivery is going to be given to all Kenyans in equal measure, regardless of where you voted, because we are all taxpayers. And that is something that needs to be loaded. And so now what we are waiting for is action. Madam Speaker, the only thing that I would have requested or asked is of the Deputy President to also follow what the President has said. I was a bit disturbed when the news came out that the Deputy President said something to the effect that it is their turn to eat. I hope he was misquoted. Madam Speaker, public appointments belong to Kenyans. Public appointments, whether position of pub, 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 uh, permanent or principal secretaries, those positions are positions in the public and civil service and are not supposed to be used as a reward for political uh, support. Those positions belong to all of us, whether you voted as Emil or you voted Kenya Kwanzaa. And how I wish that the Deputy President understood that. So, Madam Speaker, we expect the Public Service Commission to be impartial and not to be a subject or a victim of state, state capture. Having said that, Madam Speaker, something that worries me a lot is that however short or brief the speech of the President was, but I expected at least a line on devolution. If the President could remember National Government Constituency Development Fund, which I support as a very progressive fund, then I wonder how he could forget to mention something on devolution. He even spoke about the Senate Oversight Fund, but did not say a thing on devolution. If there is one thing that has changed the architecture of governance in this country, it is devolution from 2013. And this is something that should always find a space in the speech of a president of the Republic of Kenya. So I hope, because he was summarizing his speech, probably it was left among the very many volumes 
that I saw he did not read. I could see that the president read, read a portion of his speech and decided to leave others. And being uh, an intelligent man, he must have summarized it in a way that we couldn't even uh, notice that he left out some. I just want to think, I just want to assume that devolution was part of the rest of his speech. Because if it is not, then it would worry me. The president talked a lot about economy in his short speech and even proposed that he would, he would start by cutting our budget by about 300 billion shillings. I thought that was a bit ambitious, but I'm waiting to see through the supplementary budget what the Treasury has for us to actualize the pronouncements by the President. However, I don't think the solution is on the quantum of the budget as such, or the cutting down of the budget as such. To me, I think we should focus as a country on misuse of resources, on governance issues, and look at the fiscal discipline in this country. What you can call corruption. And Madam Speaker, I don't understand why the President is finding it so hard to call corruption, corruption. I rarely hear my President talks about corruption. He will always cut corners and use language that is close to corruption, but he will not call it corruption. I would want President William Ruto to call corruption, corruption. If there is one thing that he should disobey his policy of bottom-up, it is on corruption. This one must be top-down. This must be fought top-down. You can't fight it bottom-up. This one you must fight top-down. The president who is the head of this country must come out forthrightly, forcefully, and call corruption, corruption, and make life unbearable for those who are corrupt. These are the people who are making our budget be inflated. These are the same people who are making this country lack resources to be able to implement the projects that we should implement. And Madam Speaker, I want to just advise the executive, if they can take my advice, the time is running out. Honeymoon is over. Today, it is exactly 30 days since they were sworn in office. And the deputy president is still talking over here. He doesn't believe. If you don't believe and Kenyans are expecting services, what do you want us to do? Please believe and start delivering services. We want the cost of living to come down, the price of fuel to come down, and don't now talk about Ukraine war. During campaigns, you said Ukraine war has nothing to do with this. Now we are joining you in cheering that Ukraine is very far from Kenya. We want the price of fuel, petroleum products to come down. The price of unga must come down to 80%, 80 shillings as we were promised. There is no more time to move around. My president, now you have already sold yourself as a Kenyan leader internationally. We now want you here, back home. And sit, and very soon we are going to give you your cabinet. Once you have that cabinet, please perform. Kenyans don't want any more wastage of time because the economy is down. That is a fact. We all agree. But we will support you to make sure that this economy is resuscitated only with good policies. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you. And now uh, I call the ranking member for Garissa uh, constituency. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I will not take a lot of time uh, in contributing to the speech of my president. 